using permanent materials like granite. Yellow Springs artist John Barlow Hudson creates public art on a monumental scale. My professional label would be public sculptor, and I've wanted to do that for a long time because you reach more people by making work for public places. Of course, I just started out making small sculptures. That was great fun, but it's like a dollhouse. It's all fine to make a dollhouse, but that's for dolls. You need to make a big real house in order to use it to live in it. So same with sculpture. A little sculpture is fine for a maquette or sitting on a table, but to experience it with your whole being, you need it to be of a scale that you can relate to it with, climb on it or bump into it. I've got public sculptures throughout the states from Maine to California. I have public sculptures in 27 different countries, and there are at least 22 throughout China. Each different project has a different geography, environment, plants, architecture, function. So maybe in one context, stone would be most appropriate, or stainless steel, or like downtown Dayton, the yellow piece that's powder-coated aluminum. That street used to be a canal full of water, used to transport, create energy, and so on. So today the street is a canal for vehicles which create eddies in the air as they race by. So fluid dynamics seemed the appropriate concept for that location. Paradigm Shift is a mirror stainless steel piece. Moore Technology Center at Sinclair is teaching new technologies. And so we are in a paradigm shift from the mechanistic to the informational or electronic age. So that piece vortexes up one direction and midway changes and vortexes the opposite direction. Sometimes, depending on the piece, I like to surprise people, like if you take the bronze tree of books at our Yellow Springs Public Library. I started out with this stack of books and made this spiral trunk, and then they spit off the top. And then within the tree, I put what were then contemporary things like a cassette recorder and cassette tapes and audiovisual tapes. And I also made a bookworm climbing through a book. And then there's a book with the title of my mother's published novel. Those are elements to discover. It's that discovery that's really fun. Public projects tend to take a lot of time, in particular, because you've got committees and regulations and all that stuff. And you put a whole package together it ends up being six months or a year or two years or some such thing. Let's go to the common good, for example. I spent a good two years on that project, and that wasn't that big. I had the stone, a very large granite service plate from Wright Pad Air Force Base. I got it for the cost of getting it over here. And it sat for almost 20 years, I think. Well, that's pretty good. That's I waited until this opportunity came that I could give it a home. The impetus for the Common Good sculpture was Tim Reardon, the city manager for Dayton, also Cincinnati. And after he retired, Tim got to thinking that he wanted to honor the public servants that he had worked with over his career. As a committee, we came up with the idea of uh, a bunch of quotes, and we decided to run the quotes around the stone so that you have to walk around the stone to read it so as to engage the viewer. And then the seats, of course, engage you. 
there's quotes inside, and then you see that you can sit in it. And because there's an interconnecting hole, you can talk through the stone, which is the idea of communicating, breaking through walls in public service. It's all about communication and coming together. It's not an environmental sculpture. It's more about communicating an idea to the people in the community. Uh, my name is Tim Reardon, and uh, this is a project I've worked on for a couple years. The name of the piece is The Common Good. We had a lot of discussion about what we should name the piece, and it really just felt, this is what we work for. This is what we do. We do the common good. And I want to start it out just by saying, a thank you to all the public servants who do such good work for our city, schools, county, state, and country, and the world. And I just think it's a great deal. Why is public art important? I think it's important because it's a way of embodying energies of that time, which is then communicated with people down through time. So, you know, you have Roman period and the Greeks or the Egyptians, all these different energies of that time we get to see because of the sculpture and the creative works that were made. It enriches our experience of being human, our history in the world. It shows how our culture got to be, what it is. And those people are communicating with us today. And I want to do that with my work. So that's why I like to build big sculpture.